How's it going guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse and I'm here with Spencer, Sports Marketing Director at Adidas. And today we're talking about super shoes, super foams, stack heights, the regulations that are put in place that really create guidelines to a shoe that you can create. Maybe let's take a step back, talk about where kind of these guidelines all started and how it's kind of affected the shoemaking process. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Connor. I'm fortunate enough, I've been in this industry for, for 25 years. And so it, it's interesting to see how, how it's evolved. And if, if you take a step back, you know, you look at some of the stuff we were doing as a company way back when in 2000, we were working with Atto Bolden and we were working on a spike. And, you know, we've seen some of the stuff that we were doing then. And this was that, this is the beginnings of this which was you know, the, the prime SP as it was then. And, and the idea was you know, no receptacles, et cetera, because you were looking to lose as much weight as possible. That was what the industry was looking for. And this spike came in at under 100 grams. And it seems that that minimal approach was what everybody wanted. They wanted the lightest, fastest, okay? And that was the same in the running shoe. We had the, the first version of the Takumi Sen, which was you know, minimalistic. And we had athletes like Mary Katani doing wonderful things, winning New York Marathon. It. And we wouldn't have advised anybody else to run a marathon, but when you're 45 kilograms and a superb athlete like that, then you can go and do special things. And that's seemingly where the industry was at. Then came the advent of the so-called super shoe, you know, started in 2016 and pushed us all the way there. And then, then all of a sudden was like, okay, we're asking questions about regulations. What needs to change? It's a minefield out there. There's no rules in place. So we all get together with World Athletics. I was fortunate enough to be a part of that commission that actually worked on what we needed to do, represented us from all the other companies to sit around the table and say, what is and what isn't acceptable. Now, you kind of, it's kind of advantage to the player at that point in time that had a product that was at 40 mils. And it was like, well, could it be 30 mils? It could have been 30 mils, um, but it was a case of, well, there is a product out there it's 40 mils, so yes, it's advantage to one company, but it's like, okay guys, you know, let's, let's start. And you know, we as a company, were already in the process of doing some stuff. We actually, interestingly enough, had stack outs that were actually higher than that, but you know, let's not delve into that. But it was where we were starting because there weren't rules in place. So we were like looking into what, what is gonna be for the benefit of the athlete, what's gonna make them faster. And more importantly, what's often not spoken about is their recovery. These type of products allow the athletes to run harder and faster and recover quicker. And that's something that doesn't often get talked about. But when we had the rules that were set, we were like, okay, now it's fair play. It's an equal playing field. Let's start, let's get some shoes out there. And that's when we got the Adios Pro, which was our first sort of massive delve into that and a phenomenal product. And all of a sudden, it's a bit of an equal playing field. We've got athletes doing amazing things, double win in Boston, double win in New York Marathon, et cetera. So those are great things that happened to us. And that was, you know, you put these rules in place and then you go for it, the sprint spike. You've got 20 mils in a sprint spike. I mean, that's what I just said. You look at those two babies. I mean, this is like, there's nothing here. And then here you've got 20 mils. And it's taking the learnings and putting it in. And the athletes have just reacted to it. You know, we've been working with the likes of Noah Lyles, Wade for Nico, Shana Miller, Tyler Miller, you, Weber. And it's just, you know, put this on, it's just like, it's this amazing feeling. And that's what 20 mils give you. You know, you've now got an opportunity to put some interesting things under the hood within the regulations, but all of a sudden it's pushing athletes forward and they're feeling the propulsion. And that's what the new rules have, have allowed us to do. Now, with specifically the sprint spike, you know, at that 20 millimeter limit, when you were building this shoe, did you know that there was going to be that limit or did you have to make different kind of alterations and figure out, you know, once the rules came into place, what shoe you were actually going to use for race day? No, that's a great question, Connor. No, absolutely that. There were discussions of actually going into 25 because there was a, a thought process to make all the spikes across the board from sprint to whether it was hammer, disc or shot, everything at 25. And I can remember just sitting in the room and just looking across and shaking my head because 25 just seemed like, like in a different stratosphere, like why do we need 25 mils? It was set at 20 eventually, but we were, we were running, our developers were actually running parallel developments of 20 and 25, just understanding when the rules were going to be agreed on that it was going to be X and then it was like, okay, this is the baby that we're going to use. So that's where we were at. We were running parallel developments at 20 and 25 and eventually it was set at 20 mils. Yeah. Now these stack heights, you know, probably the, the biggest reason why they're so important is the introduction of the super foam and um, how that reacts kind of to get that energy return. Do you see super foams continuing to progress, continuing to get springier, continuing to get more responsive and how much further can we go? No, absolutely. And I think uh, you, you've nailed it. We've, we've now got much clearer regulations. And so when you look at the opportunity of development, where, where is that going to be? Um, and that's it, we think. Right now, it's, it's more than, than likely going to be in the phones. Um, if you look at the phones that we were using, 
in the industry 10 years ago versus today. They're much more responsive and much lighter. So that's probably the biggest area and opportunity of, of improvement. So I think that's that's where it's gonna lie for people to find that, find something that's even lighter and even more responsive. And we have these world athletic regulations, they're set, but do you see kind of room to go past those limits for training benefits, for the pros, for normal people who don't have to kind of live within these regulations and where do you see that progressing in the future? I mean, having the opportunity of having, you know, stellar athletes like Perez, Chepteture, et cetera, um, in our portfolio have allowed us that opportunity to continually test with them to try and see, you know, what's it like wearing a particular item? What do you feel like the day after? Oh, you know, I've done a 30K session. Normally speaking, I'd be needing, you know, a shuffle session and, and a day's break before I go into the next session. That's not the case anymore. And that's, I think that benefit is just going to be to the general consumer as well. They're going to feel the benefit too, that these firms are going to allow them to train much harder at a higher in, in intense level um, so there is definitely a benefit and they are going to see it yeah and we've seen shoes like the prime x going towards 50. is, is there a too high like how high up do you think we could potentially go yeah interesting question i mean i think the the, the prime in itself was part of that development i spoke about earlier where we were actually looking at products at a stack height because the stack heights hadn't been determined yet and that's our go-to training shoes for all rally elites now that's what they train in because that allows them that extra benefit of recovery. So you got an extra 10 millimeters in there and it, it means something. Uh, and they really use it as a, as a shoe. Now, unfortunately, we obviously had the incident at the Vienna Marathon when my other athletes didn't understand it was a training shoe, not a competition shoe. Uh, that's obviously been you know, intensely uh, communicated, um, but it's such a popular shoe because it allows that, that opportunity to train harder, longer, etc., with greater recovery. So there's a story there. I mean, you know, athletes are, they're not machines, they're human beings. And we as a brand spend a lot of time with them you know, about what it is that you do when you're on the road as in training and also off about sleep, about nutrition, about hydration um, and recovery. And so that makes you a better athlete. Some years ago, we actually had a seminar with our leading agents um, at our head office in Hosokanara. And we spoke to them and said, what can we do to help you know, your athletes get better? And obviously the first talk was about the shoe. And we said, well, here's, here's what we're working on. And they were very happy to hear that. But then we started talking to them about those other elements to help the athletes get better. So it's a holistic approach. The shoes are obviously an important part of that, but the different elements that we work on with the athletes as well. Yeah. Well, it's really exciting to hear the progress that Adidas has made. It's really nice now that we have a set rule. So now you can build that shoe. You know that you are building a legal shoe to give to the athlete to wear on race day. And the performances speak for themselves. The athletes are running faster. They're recovering quicker. And I think right now it's just an exciting time to be in the running shoe space. And uh, now we just got to see what the future holds because I think the shoes are going to continue to improve and elevate athlete performance. Yeah, no doubt about that. Absolutely. You've got a set of rules. Working with those rules, make athletes faster.